Alright, hi. Today we'll be talking about surface area in part four of our series on volume, arc lengths, and surface areas in calculus. And surface area formulas are pretty darn easy. Uh, just 2 pi times x times the square root of 1 plus our function derivative squared dx if we're rotating about the y-axis. And then all you do is change out uh, the x values or x's wherever you see x's with y's if you're rotating about the x-axis. We're going to rotate about the y-axis. So first off, here's our function, uh, y equals x squared plus 3, and we're going to be looking at the interval from 0 to 3, and we're going to be rotating about the y-axis. So once again, if you visualize, if you visualize what's going on with this, this is going up 3, 1, two, three, okay, it's going to be a parabola like that, and we're going to be rotating about, getting this shape over here, not exactly my best in the world, okay, all right, and it's going to be kind of hollowed out inside, so we're going to be rotating about in this fashion. Okay, so finding the surface area. Alright, some pretty easy stuff. We just plug it in. First off, you want to find f of x. and It's just silly notation, but it's notation nonetheless. So x squared plus 3. Okay, next we're going to actually do the integral. I'm sorry, the integral, the diff derivative of it. And this should be 2x. Alright, pretty simple, straightforward. And then we're going to square that. Uh, and the reason is, is that if you start practicing outside of the uh, actual formula and you square everything, it just makes your job so much easier. Okay. All right, now that we've got that, we're going to plug everything into our formula. Okay, so once again, we just plug in for f, of f, f prime of x squared. We just plug in what we got down here, which was what we calculated it to be. Now, if this is looking like really kind of scary to differentiate, don't be too scared because if you look at this, this is a perfect squared trinomial. Or it would normally be a perfect squared trinomial, but it's not. Okay, so don't be fooled by it like Mr. Devaney was when he looked at it the first time. Now, if this was a minus sign, we would be okay and we would be well on our way to figuring out this problem, just working with it. But we got to start doing some u substitution. So I'm going to take this 2 pi, move it out front. Okay, just because you just don't want to deal with the constants, they just always make your job a lot harder. Okay, so we got 2 pi. Okay, we have our integral from 0 to 3, and we got the x, and then square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. Okay, now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get rid of the square root notation. I'm just going to make it to the 1 half power. So we're going to make this to the 1 half power. And we're going to do some u substitution. Now, I'm going to make this my u. Okay, so u is going to be, it's the reverse chain rule. So u equals uh, 1 plus 4x squared. So du would equal 8x dx. That one's pretty simple. I got the dx, I got the 8, but I, or I've got the dx, I've got the x. I'm missing the 8. So, once again, you need to make some numbers appear out of thin air. So, in order to make 8 appear, I also need to make 1 8 appear. So, in the very front, I'm going to have the 1 8 and then times by 8. That will just make my job a whole lot easier with multiplying this. And obviously, I'm going to also put a multiplication because I'm going to multiply that by 2 pi. Okay? All right. So now, what happens? I now have my x, I have my 8, I have my dx, I can replace that with du, and I can replace this with u. Just makes my job a whole lot easier. And 1 8 times 2 pi is going to be pi fourths. Okay? Alright, so that also makes my uh, constant in front a lot easier. So I still have 3, I still have from 0, 
and this all changes to something a little bit easier, x to the one half du. And now I can differentiate, or I'm sorry, differentiate, integrate with respect to u, okay? All right, so as I work across, I'm still going to have the pi force, okay? But I'm going to be timesing by 2 over u to the 1 half, okay? All right, and then we have, let me see, we have our index right here, three right up here, we got zero. Now what do we replace u with? Once again, you just go back to the beginning and you replace u with one plus four x squared. Okay, so I'm going to start to integrate it. So we're going to have pi force as our first part times two divided by the square root of 1 plus 4 times 9. Okay, remember I'm just plugging that in. And then we're going to minus 0 because obviously that's the other part. It's just going to turn into a bunch of zeros. No, 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 not exactly actually. It's going to be pi force. Jeez, I'm slipping my old age. It's going to be pi force times what happens when x becomes 0 and it's going to be 2 divided by uh, 1 plus that so this will just become 2 so we'll just leave it as is okay now over here this is going to turn into 36 the whole thing will turn into 37 Okay, and it's all going to be terms of pi force. So I would strongly recommend if you wanted the exact answer, just write pi force out front and then have inside uh, 2 divided by the square root of 37 uh, minus 1. Well, no, minus 2. Okay? And voila, you have your exact answer of the surface area of this shape revolving about the y-axis. Okay.